Recently, the first Chiricahua leopard frogs were released in northern Arizona. Oh, there you went. As part of the Arizona Game and Fish Department's new program, which enlists the help of non-federal landowners to conserve threatened species. Oh, oh, little boy. More than 30 frogs, including adults and tadpoles, were released into a protected pond on private property near Sholo. Good, good. Oh, it was exciting. We've been looking forward to this for a long time. I would ran into Wade and we had talked to him. He was looking at the pond and stuff, and so we got to talking about all kinds of different things, and uh, uh, he said, you know, Dan in my office ought to see this pond because it's, this would be a great place for the frogs. And so Martha and I were talking about it after they left, and they go, you know, boy, that would be a good, a good idea, and we'd be able to give something back to, uh, to nature, so to speak, in a small way. It's like I'm ready for freedom. The frogs for this inaugural release came from a breeding oh, stock great. that originated Fantastic. from the Three Forks area of the Apache Sitgraves National Forests. There you went. At the Pine Top uh, Regional Office, we have some uh, facilities on loan from our fisheries department, actually. They've been very generous in allowing us to use some raceways, all their piping and a lot of their expertise. And we've been raising frogs there since uh, 2000, actually. We used to go out and uh, grab egg masses from the wild, bring them in, raise them in captivity until they get to be about a year old or past their vulnerable stages in life, and then set them free, which is called head starting. Fortunately now, and this release we did today was one of the first occasion where we were able to release frogs that were bred at the Pine Top facility actually. We didn't have to take any eggs from the wild. So now we're a little bit more capable for using more sites and producing more eggs to be uh, reintroduced in some of these areas. So that was one of the significant uh, actions we took today, releasing frogs that were actually born at our propagation facility. And we also were able to release a couple of adult frogs that we've had uh, for quite a few years. So we're hoping to jumpstart this population here using adult frogs. So maybe we could even have some breeding this year or next year. So usually it takes about three or four years to go from a tadpole stage to an adult stage at least. So during those three or four years, they're prone to a lot of predation, but by putting these adults out here right away, we're hoping to jumpstart again this process. And one of the frogs came from a uh, population of frogs that were raised by Dr. Phil Fernandez, uh, uh, formerly at Grand Canyon University. Now he's at uh, Glendale Community College. So we want to acknowledge Dr. Fernandez and all of his work where he started this, this uh, population back in the 90s. Our captive facility did a fantastic job rearing the frogs and so they were essentially ready to go. Before the frogs could be released into clean waters, we needed to ensure that the frogs themselves were free of fungus. And what better way than to give them a bath? The tadpoles were treated with a treatment of benzylconium chloride solution, and the frogs were treated in an itraconazole solution. And these uh, chemical baths are to essentially treat the frogs for, um, to, to try to remove any fungal diseases that they might have so that we're not um, transmitting any sort of diseases out into wild populations of amphibians and just to make sure that we're putting clean frogs out there on the landscape. Biologists hope that the frogs from this site will breed successfully and become a source population for stocking future waters. Uh, these are Chiricahua leopard frogs. Uh, they're part of the Ranopipians complex of uh, random frogs, and they have been historically pretty common um, and were common um, well into the 1970s, but then started to decline. And um, we believe it's largely due to um, the spread of disease, the what's known as the frog chytrid fungus, um, also drought and habitat loss. A lot of our waterways have dried up and so there's just a lot less habitat out there for the frogs. A recovery team was created to help bring the species back from the brink of extinction. The team developed a recovery plan with the goal of recovering the species to the point where it can be removed from the endangered species list. Maybe need to be able to see them out there. Well, we'll, we'll all get a chance to let some go. That'll be exciting. So as soon as Emily gets the pH, we'll start 
um, putting a little bit of water in to get them acclimated. The plan includes releases of captive bred frogs, habitat restoration, and monitoring. Well, just give them a little bit of time to, to transition over to the new, because it's not going to be exactly the same as the... Until the, the 1970s, Chiricahua leopard frogs lived in ponds and creeks across central and southeastern Arizona. But populations have declined significantly since then due to drought, disease, habitat loss, and threats from non-native species. But with the Safe Harbor Agreement here, it opens up some flexibility and management, and um, some landowners have some assurances that if they help us out with some endangered species reintroductions, they're not going to be penalized in their land values or restrictions on land use or anything like that. Chiricahua leopard frogs were once found throughout uh, southern Arizona and New Mexico and into, into Mexico, but the historic surveys done by our non-game branch in the 90s um, uh, showed that they were still found in a few spots, but just more recent surveys have shown that they're, they're gone from even those historic locations. So Fish and Wildlife Service decided they were too close to becoming um, endangered and actually listed them as threat. Some great This mud. introduction of Chiricahua leopard frogs is the first to occur as part of a new safe harbor agreement. The Safe Harbor program makes it possible for private and non-federal landowners to participate in the conservation of multiple wildlife species, including endangered Gila top minnow, desert pupfish, yaki top minnow, and kitobakito pupfish by providing refuge sites. The reason we were looking at a, a, a frog refugia area for the Chiricahua leopard frog is we've, there's a demand to have frogs out there and to work with private landowners to establish uh, some pond areas. The problem that we're having is we don't have enough frogs to supply that demand. And so setting up a refugia here and working with private landowners was really uh, something that we needed to do as a department uh, to promote and propagate the species. The Safe Harbor program focuses on identifying ideal sites that will contribute the most to the recovery of the species. Finding suitable natural waters, sources of frogs, and the resources required to provide oversight after a release are the biggest challenges for the program and the recovery of the species. Since source populations for Chiricahua leopard frogs are limited, the department must be selective when choosing locations for enrollment in the Safe Harbor uh -huh. Agreement. Only those locations with the highest potential to help recover this threatened species are selected as release sites. Uh, ideally, we're looking for areas that have permanent water sources that are not going to go dry in times of drought. Uh, we're also looking for um, properties that are near or adjacent to federal lands. Um, that way, these frogs, once they get established on some of these private lands, they have an opportunity to move out onto our national forests and, and establish themselves in our other natural waterways. Um, we're looking for places that George, George have not been uh, inundated His with non-native species, whether it be bullfrogs or crayfish that would kind of in, impair our ability to recover the frogs. So. Uh, places that the, the frogs will do well um, out in the wild without very little um, active management where we can just allow them to be frogs and to, to reproduce and, and spread across the landscape. The reintroduction was carried out through a cooperative effort between the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Game and Fish, and the landowners. Funding assistance to prepare the site was provided by the Landowner Incentive Program, a grant program administered by Game and Fish on behalf of the Department of the Interior. We work with private landowners, uh, building mostly building relationships, and the relationships are important to, to Game and Fish, uh, mostly to work with the propagation of new species or to continue, continue work with species that are threatened or endangered or species at risk. We always have these ideas, we're going to come up and do a lot of work and do a lot of different things and we wind up getting our coffee or our sodas or whatever and going and sitting on the porch and look at the pond and, and watching the birds and, and enjoying the animals and, and so forth up here. And, uh, but now we're going to have an even bigger incentive to go down and sit down at the pond closer to be able to see if we can count frogs and see how many frogs we can see. So I'm really looking forward to that.